Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chris Thompson. I'm a software engineer on the Firebase team. Day to day, I work on the emulator suite, and so I'm excited to be here today to tell you all about why I think the emulator suite is the fastest, safest, no-cost way to develop on Firebase. So today, we announced the emulator suite was graduating from beta to general availability. What does that mean exactly? Well, we have Firestore, real-time database, storage, hosting, and authentication, in addition to the emulator suite UI that have graduated to GA today. And there's three additional emulators that are going to stay in beta for now. They are the functions, cloud pub sub, and extensions emulators. This effort started in 2018, so it's been a long road to get here, and I'm excited to finally be GA. So before I go to the agenda, uh, as a show of hands, uh, how many people here have used the emulator suite before? Pretty good amount. How many have never used the emulator suite before? OK. And how many are just waiting patiently for lunch? Good stuff. So before we go any further, a quick agenda. So we're going to talk about what is the emulator suite today? What is it good for? We're going to take a look at running a project locally. We'll take a look at the emulator suite UI. And finally, we'll test making and testing some changes uh, live today. So first up, what is the emulator suite? The emulator suite is a set of binaries that run locally on your machine that create a near hermetic environment and enable things like local development, prototyping, unit testing, and even continuous integration. So today I'm going to demo some of the features that make the emulator suite fast and secure. Uh, if we could switch to the demo, please. I just hit the mirror button there. So today I'm going to use the completed Code Lab application that we developed as part of our tutorial. Uh, I recommend everyone check out the Code Lab. It takes under an hour and covers three out of the five emulators that are going GA today. Prerequisites for this demo, real quick. I have Node Package Manager installed. I have the Firebase command line interface installed, and I've logged in under my account. And finally, we'll be using Git to pull down the changes or the app. So first up, I'm going to do a git clone .com Firebase. This is going to pull down a completed app for us to use here today. OK. And one additional step, I'm going to navigate to my functions directory. and install our NPM dependencies. Now, I think the Wi-Fi is running at about 2 megabits per second here, so this might take a second. While this is chugging along, um, the next step, rather than dive right into the code, we're just going to execute the application and take a look at what we have. Perfect. So I'm going to use the Firebase emulator. Hey, let's do a clear. Firebase emulators start. And I'm going to pass it my project ID flag. And I'm going to import from our C directory. This is going to give us some C data uh, that gets us rolling. While this is starting up, I want to point out the special project ID that I used here today with the demo prefix. In the Firebase console, it's not possible to create a project with a demo, the demo prefix. And so it tells the emulator suite that we want to work completely offline. And it's going to sub in some configs locally rather than fetch them from the Firebase console using my logged in credentials. And we see that the app is now running. We'll take a look at it here on localhost 5000. So everything you see here is running locally on this laptop. Um, and the initial state is populated from that C directory. This is an example of a typical e-commerce app. So I can log in in the top right. I can add some items to my cart. And we can see in the top right, the cart is updated with the number of items and the new total. So the magic of the cart happens. There's a calculate cart cloud function that's running locally that's triggered 
whenever we add items to the cart. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later. The other thing I want to showcase today is the emulator, the emulator suite UI. You can see at the top we have, yep, we can see at the top we have a series of emulators. Some of them are running right now, some of them are not. Let's take a look at the authentication emulator tab. You can see here, this is the record that I created when I did the, perform the anonymous login a second ago. If we take a look at our Firestore, these are the items that we imported from the C directory, and the items have a description, image URL, name, price. And this is the card that I created when I added some items to my cart. It's got a number of items, owner ID, total price. The last tab I want to show you today is our logs tab, and this contains the logs for all the running emulators. And this is the first place we're going to look when debugging our app. So diving into the code, let me load this up. And there's two files that we care about today. First being in the public directory, index.html, and second being index.js from the functions directory. So taking a look at index.html, this is your typical, exactly what you'd expect. This is the HTML landing page for our app. And I'll point out here that the body is mostly empty because we're populating this with JavaScript as we read from Firestore. On the index.js side, we have our calculate cart function. And this is responsible for listening to changes to our cart in Firestore and updating it so we can see it in the app. So to prove that this is a live demo, I'm going to make a quick change here. I'm going to save this, and this is automatically going to be picked up by our running emulator suite. And let's go here, do a refresh. Okay, nothing happened. I think what might be happening here is the emulators are a little bit shy today, so we could give them a quick round of applause, get them hyped up. There we go, perfect. There's our change. And so I got this change, I loaded this change by refreshing the site and not reloading our emulator suite, which is still running. And you can see that uh, the initial state with the card in the top right is still preserved. So I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, HTML hot reload, that's great. But I came a long way to New York to be here today, so you're gonna have to do a little bit better than that. I hear you. Let's take a look at our index.js. So again, this, card is this calculate card is responsible for listening to writes to our um, cart, or the items in our cart in Firestore. And let's say I want to make a change here. I'm going to add a last updated timestamp to our cart and items so that I know for debugging purposes the last time they were updated. So I'll declare a constant last updated. And using the change object above, I'm going to get the reference for the cart item. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to throw it in here. This is our cart ref. Um, perfect. So we take a look at our emulator suite UI. You can see at the bottom of the logs that this uh, function change is hot reloaded. It's ready to go on our functions emulator. And so let's add some items to our cart. If I scroll up here, we'll see that the cart is updated. We have four items now, 5196. Everything's looking good. And if we take a look at our cart here, we can see that the last updated timestamp is here, just like we expected. But something unexpected is happening here. <laughs> what we accidentally introduced was a function loop. And so because the function is listening to changes to Firestore, when it writes the last updated timestamp itself, it triggers the function. And this is a not uncommon thing to encounter uh, when using cloud functions. And so uh, I will point out there, too, that there's some, there's some protections against this that I uh, gingerly stepped over in order to um, make this work. So the, the typical solution here is we wanted to detect if this is the, not the first time that we're in this function. So we can do that because our app, um, our app can only add items to the card. It can't update or delete them. We can simply check 
if the item existed before. So if the item existed before, this must be at least the second time that we're through the loop. I'm going to save this. Automatically gets picked up. And now our last update is stable. So back to the slides, please. So just to linger on this point a little bit longer, let's say we had one QPS of users who are adding items to their cart. That means we're introducing a new function loop roughly once per second, and let's say that function loop executes once a second. So after about one hour of time, we're burning about $23 per hour in compute, and after a whole day, we have about $560 per hour in compute. But we saved all of this by running our functions locally and testing locally and vetting them before going to production. So to recap, what do we cover today? We covered what is the emulator suite and what is it good for. We download and ran an existing application within 60 seconds. I think that's fair. And we updated our function, introduced a bug, and caught the bug and fixed it. I invite everybody to check out the emulator code lab at the URL here, firebase.glue.com slash code lab slash firebase emulator. Thank you all. Thank you.